guys, welcome back to Buster's Corner. See, is the microphone working this time? Hello, hello. All right, we're doing Sonoma, season three, race one. And we're at Sonoma. Hmm. We have like three or four road courses this this quarter. I'm not a road guy. I have an A license in oval. And I think I got a B in road. Yeah. Okay, a um, couple things here. Let's go click this off. Here's something new I found out. I think I was watching the uh, Alien 51 video. When my screen pops up here, I guess I'm on live broadcasts all the time. If I click over here on Dashboard, which I never did, I had my last race and stuff like that. Finished third, Nashville Speedway in a hosted event on June 12th. Oh, that was a... Uh, um, practice. Oh, that's probably this morning's practice. Let me see. Oh, Sean Powell came in. I did a 29.9930. Interesting, huh? No, oh, that's just something I found out. Okay, let's get crack clacking on Sonoma. So, something else I found out here. Let's see here. Let's go racing. Go here. Cause I got some changes here. I'm not going to use. This is the uh, NCIS series. What do they call that? NIS. Oh, NIS series. So, but that's on a different time frame than what we are on. So, let's go to... Can I change this? Can I change this? There, we change it over here. Because, according to our schedule, the snow race we have starts at 15.325. So the time here, is it late afternoon? No, it's not. I guess it is afternoon here. All right, that's fine. But we have to go through here. Uh, did I get the marbles off the track? Generate track at 60%. Okay, that's my normal param set weather. Take dynamic sky off and test drive. Okay, so what I want to really talk about here, okay, so as far as the setup, I got something I can drive. That's all I got. It's not the fastest car out there. I think I did a uh, 117.9 uh, once, but uh, they're in the 1800s, 118, um, hour 18 minutes. No, 118s <laughs> um, uh, type of thing. I, I, I'm not a road racer. Um, I don't like a real loose, loose car, and you really got to have that to, I guess, to drive road racing. <clears throat> So we're going to talk about his brakes, okay? And I got a clip here. Well, let's, let me show you a clip here. Let's roll this. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Buster's Corner. So we're running Sonoma this week, and I want to talk a little bit about brake calipers. So as you get a setup, Oops. wherever you get the setup from, DRS or Rico or myself, or Buster's, you need to adjust the brake calipers for you. And this is quite common on road courses, any place where there's a lot of braking, uh, uh, Martinsville, if you will. Um, I always do a little bit of braking in, in there. But bigger tracks, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But, so I want to show you what calipers. So we look at calipers, so I'm going to turn all my hose on. And you're going to look at the house pressure. The house pressure is basically your pedals and what your pedals can do for you. Some pedals are better, some are than others, and, and some are not so good at all. But, so that's the pressure at the house. Now we go from one inch down to at least 1930 seconds. So, see that, can you see that? That's a one inch caliper, okay? I got brakes, it's coming through. It's not a lot of braking, is it? Daytona, Talladega. That's what you're looking at, a one, a one inch caliper. Let's go down to our 1930 seconds. 1930 seconds, right? That's a lot of pressure. So that's kind of how you look at your brake calipers. Now, brake bias is something else. You look at that as far as if you're if the car is too loose going in, uh, put some more forward brake bias into it. Uh, if it's tight going in, reverse it. Uh, that's that's something totally kind of different. Uh, we'll talk about it when we get back to the computer. For me, on my setups, I like to drive the car in deep, short amount of braking, 
right? So I, use, I usually run uh, uh, the smaller calipers, uh, maybe mid, mid range on the calipers. Um, if you're the guy that likes to drag your brakes slowly going in, then you're going to use maybe a one inch, one inch caliper. You don't have a lot of brake pressure, but it slows the car down gingerly. If you're trail braking, all right, uh, Talladega Daytona, trail braking, um, you would run a bigger uh, caliper so you're not really slowing the car down a lot real fast, but you're just kind of uh, trail braking a little bit, a little bit of braking, bigger calipers. Martinsville, I want I want the smallest calipers I can get. I want to stop right now. I want to stop on a dime uh, and, and kind of go from there. That's calipers. Okay, that's my uh, definition of calipers. Explanation of calipers. We'll go back inside of the computer and we'll play with it some more. Okay, there you go. So, the wife and I made that this morning. That's calipers. So let me see here. Do I have my setup loaded here? Where am I? 1.5. So my calipers on this, and I got 13, 16, 27, 32. So see, I'm right in the middle. So my rear caliper, actually on this one here, and I look at this, this I got this guy get this backwards. Uh, I've got, I'm using less brake in the back than I am in the front. And then I'm running a 47. So I say, I, you know what, I got this kind of, this works, but this could actually actually probably go the other way. I didn't realize I was doing that. Let me see here. iRacing, Sonoma. They're running the 15 and the 1. Okay. So here, Matt and his guys have gone the other way than what I'm thinking. And they've got really uh, big calipers on here. So f for me, you're not going to get a lot of braking. And I guess he's... He probably has this so you're not locking the brakes up. Okay, so you're going to slow down sooner. You're going to stop. You're, you're going to start your your slow down period a lot sooner than what I would, uh, and and not lock the brakes up too much. So, but what we're going to do first, let's go back to. Oh, actually, I want to do something else. Do, 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 do my setups. Um, I have um, Phil set up in here. He was seasoned to as he put it. The, you gotta figure out how to name these things, you guys. You're not naming them right. Um, Phil is season two, 22. He's got underbar on it here somewhere. Where are you, Phil? This one. Phil's running the one inch in the front and seven eighths in the back. Uh, and that's okay. And that that's a lot better. So he's got more brake pressure in the rear of the car. And so I think I got mine backwards here. I hate when that happens. So let's go drive a couple. Oops, not this one. Okay, let's try this one. Let's do... do, 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 do. Let's go back to... Sonoma. And we're going to get this a couple more. Make sure I got dashboard one. 264, that, that's fine. So this is the iRacing recent setup, which is not bad at all. Partial match found this in some experience database. Profile modified. This can quite easily be adjusted to to fit anybody's driving style, I think. Uh, first lap, we're going to be slow. It's the tires are real cold, and um, so are the brakes. And you will loop these cars out in this first lap. So if they got the new patch, I like it a lot, especially for the um, road courses, because I was running this, I work on a setup pre-patch. Pre-patch, pre-season three patch, and I could not get around the track. Could not get around the track. Oh, there's see brakes, brakes, brakes. See, it's taking me a long time to break this car. Oh, it's still early yet. Um, keep talking. Um, so reading Matt's notes over that they posted, uh, they've done some tire work to this car for the road courses. Um, so and it's more. I think he was saying it may not be, you know, so much realistic as it is player enhanced, because it still is a game at the bottom. At the end of the day, it's still a game, more than a simulator, and nobody could get around some of these tracks. Very few people were playing road courses. I'm one of those. I cannot keep the cards on the track. There's no grip for me. Uh, so. Thanks to iRacing's change on this tire for road courses, I'm going to run this race now on uh, Monday night. 
Okay. So we're really looking for breaking here. I'm just going to kind of compare with third, second up the hill. I see it breaking more so this one and the next one, next couple turns. On the brakes, hard on the brakes. Early. Yeah, I think with a lot of practice, you can run this this setup he's got right here. It's fine. But it's really all about memorizing your track, too. Three, two, one. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. All right, so you can get a custom, you can get used to that. That's not that big of a deal. But you really, you really are breaking early. All right. So that's that's the stuck. So I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna play with this. So he's running the 15 sixteenths and the one inch, and he's running 50.8 on that. Okay. Um, bu 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 I already see my setups. My setups. Sonoma, 1.5, and I know this is backwards, don't I? I'm going to take this 13 sixteenths and bring this to a 7 eighths, because I know I got them backwards. <coughs> okay, let's go see what this does. Uh, my on-screen shows you my break by is at 45.8, we'll have to play with that a little bit. All right, warm up lap. What are we do with Matt? So we got a 122.8. Yeah. See, that's that's not telling you what Matt's setup is, is capable of doing. That's just telling you how bad I am at this. So see, I'm on a warm-up lap, and I'm stopping faster already with the caliper change.
That's my set. 120 on the first lap. Okay. So, the setup, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a driver thing. I, yeah, it's all on me. Um, but I'm really just really, I'm talking about um, calipers here. Um, so, that's those. Now, let me see here. So, just for kicks, all right, let's say, let's take, let's take um, iRacing's. He had a 15 sixteenths, and he had a one inch, and this was sitting at 50.8. Let's go see what it does, just for kicks. <clears throat> and then we're going to talk about some other stuff here as far as braking goes. But like I said, this, you've got to set it up for you. I don't care where you get the setup from. And you may need to develop your own numbers that you like, road course, short tracks, and, and the super speedways that fits you and your gear. You don't want to stop. Which means I need to stop sooner. Now, I know a lot of you guys that come from the truck races and, and uh, fixed races, and you don't really run opens maybe much. Ooh, slow down the talking here. And they don't do. And before Next Gen came out with the, with the brake calipers, and all you do is set brake bias. Um, you know, the, the, the thing was easy in, hard out of the corners to save the tires. But with the brake calipers that are available to us now, so many options are available to you. But the trick is deciphering what is it and how can I use it? So the iRacing brakes they have right here are fine. I mean, if that's your braking pattern. But also remember, Matt and, those, Matt and his team over there need to make setups that the majority of the people can drive. And the smart guys know how to adjust it to fit, to fit them. That's our lap there. Yeah. That was our two laps, right? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, the first one was I racing setup. Second one was mine. Third one was my setup with I racing's brake calipers. Look at that. And all I changed was the brake calipers, right? And I actually should have been faster because now I'm more of a routine. And, I, you know, the muscle memory is coming into another corner and stuff like that. That's what brakes did for me. Okay. Cool, huh? Um, okay. So when we talk about brakes and we talk about brake calipers, there's a lot more that goes into the whole package. It's not just the calipers. In order for the brakes and the tires to stick, you've got to have grip in your front springs. All right. So, and I can probably do some more testing on this, but we know that there are setups that are ran with max springs. Okay. Um, 
and there are setups that have the medium springs like I have here, which is more of a more grip spring um, area, if you will. All right, so the heavy springs, they're just saying take the car, slam the car in the corner, and 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 get the, the end to rotate, end to rotate, and things like that. Free the car up, but run big springs and slam the car in there. That's not what you consider a grip spring, if you will. So I'm running a grip spring. If you have a grip spring, you'll get more braking force out of it. If you're on a 4,600-pound spring, you've got no grip. You run my calipers on a 4,600-pound spring, and the front is going to slide out on you. Zip. You'll lock them up because you've got no grip. The other thing I like to see this front end, uh, the low speed compression. I like these down low, four, three, maybe two, two, three, four. No, I don't need like five. I want to see under five. What that's doing, low speed compression, is as the front end's coming down, are you letting the front ends, are you letting the front, are you letting the nose come down? Are you letting the weight transfer to the front and let the front end springs pick it up? Okay. You need to get that squat going in the corner in order for the brakes and everything to, to work really good. If that front nose is hard, let's say, let's say if I put this low speed compression to a, a seven or an eight, well, the front end don't come down, it's too hard. There's no weight transfer, there. she's gonna slide out on you. All right, so when I talk about front ends, I like to see the, uh, you know, the lower springs here for grip um, and bring my low speed compression down below five. All right, let the front end set, set in there. And then run my calipers the way I had them. Let's see, what did I have? Let's go. Do, 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 do. Oh, I didn't write mine down, did I? Uh, Sonoma. And actually, I changed them, didn't I? I didn't save it. Where is it? 27. Uh, this needs to be 7 8 Okay. I better save that. Uh, ah, there goes 1.6, huh? Okay, so, um, to, to, and the shocks have have a lot to do with that too. Um, I might be running too, uh, my other springs might be too stiff here, I think, for this track. Um, I did some work with the shocks, but I, it could probably be dialed in more, but i run out of time. I can only do so much. Uh, what else we got here? Spinion 287. Oh, oh, mine, oh I do. 264. No, I did 287 because it's a, it's a, yeah. Because I like it like that. I wonder if I got that wrong. 264 was what I racing had, I think, wasn't it? Let's go try that real quick. Cross weight, nose weight. Everything else here is fine. I think this would be a fast car with a good driver. One of those. All right, a couple more laps here. I think we're done. How much time we got on the video? 23, yeah. Half hour or less. Bring that steering down, see if it helps me out any. So you know about the diffuser being low. Uh, what they, do? they changed the diffuser, they put some side skirts on it, took the left rear jack uh, block off of it. Gearing. Don't forget your gearing when it comes to braking. You don't have to put it all on your brakes. You can put a lot of this on the motor too. So if under braking, the rear end wants to come out on you, then you got the rear calipers too big. We're gonna find out right here. Little free, not bad. Okay, so if the rear end's coming around, you're, you got too much brake power, too much brake in the back. 
You either adjust your brake bias or adjust the caliper. That, that was pretty straight. Let's try it again right here. Okay, the car stays straight during braking, so I would, I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Got you a little too soon right there. I almost bit it. Ah, see, he's there. <clears throat> so we talk about the steering. Let's go see that just a little bit here. That was slow. That was so slap yet so far, huh? <coughs> Okay, so, I don't know if you can see my hands. Yeah, you can. All right. So, on a road course, you don't, you don't want your, your hands in your lap, right? You don't, want, you don't want your hands in your lap. So, and that's what that was happening right there. So, guys on old school stuff, they're thinking, you know, fix it up, stuff like that. They're thinking this pinion is going to save them tire wear because they're going to scrub tires and, and fix setups. That was true. You had issues with that. You had to deal with that on fixed setups. In an open setup where the rest of the car has been designed to for tire wear and things like that, this number really almost needs to be changed depending on the track you've got. So maybe Talladega, it's a 208 because it's such a big sweeping turn. All right. So probably the bigger the turn, the bigger the radius, probably the lower the number you're looking at right here. Okay. But on a tighter track, the 264 was not comfortable for me. I'm running the two, 287 on my setup. I have not tried the 315. So because the last turn down there, right, is a U-turn. How many times around do you want to rotate that wheel? You've heard the saying, get up on the wheel. Oh, that's just me. Hold on. You've heard the saying, get up on the wheel. Well, that's what this is. Get up on the wheel. Oh, look at that. Turned it nice and quick, didn't it? Okay. I wasn't expecting that. That's probably too much for me. Get the wheel turned. You see the Indy drivers, these guys that run these road courses. That wheel is tight. Barely moving the car turns. this look at that zip that corner right there how many times have you been passed down there on the inside because you got your hands in your belly can't do that in that turn right there. You swoop that turn, you're in trouble. Get off the brake, I got her bouncing there. I'm just not, I gotta get used to this wheel, but look at the green up of my screen.
I don't have to get used to that, but that is the ticket right there. 119.4, that's the ticket, wow. All right, so, wow, that was, that's huge. I don't have to get used to it. Um, my turn in points, stuff like that. But you saw how much quicker that was. Where are we at here? 19.4, we start with this. That was iRacing 122. That was me 120.4. We took half a second off of that with that steering change. Just with the steering change. Because with the other steering ratios, you're too late. I'm going to do this again. You're too late. I wouldn't mess up that turn right there. I'd have been a full second faster. Look, I can drive those S's a lot better, I can tell you that right there, look at that. Not wrong gear, wrong gear. I could take it a lot faster back there with the steering ratio. Alright, we're done. I messed it up. I messed it up. 120.4. But I'm going to keep it. I'm going to run that. Save as 116. All right. So you know what to change back if you don't like it. All right. Put the steering pinion back down to a 364, 387. Um, work with your brake calipers, brake bias. Um, work on that. Um, let me see here. If you want to free it up, loosen it up. I would probably go to my rear bars, rear bar, or um, drop this down. You can drop this nose weight down. Let's see. If you're loose on entry, increase nose weight. If you're tight on entry, you can lower it some. So I was pretty good. You could probably, I would, you know what, I almost dropped this down. I'll play with it later. This might go to 50.2. Um, or even a 50. I don't like being around 50, so it's either going to go to 49 or 50 uh, point something. Um, you can work on, I would work on the nose weight to loosen up, especially if you want to get it to rotate better in the, in the S's. In the S's. Um, and then you could uh, diff preload. All right. So um, loose on exit. 
Okay. If you go to zero, it'll make you loose on exit. If you take it to 75, it'll make you tight on exit. All right. So uh, play with it there. It does do has some effects on entry too, but more so I think for the road course that I do. I got, do not have the rear ARB attached. I found that, especially at the top of the hill, I go to get on the gas and the car wants to snap around. Okay, that's the ARB loading up one side or the other, unloading one side or the other up there. Um, we're independent rear suspension anyway, so just let it, let it free float up there is what I did. Got that from Phil off of his setup. I stole that from Philip. Thank you, Philip. That's it, guys. That's all I got. Um, let me just take a look, quick look here. Our last we finished up on. Uh, yeah, 119.4. That's me, though. I suck at road racing. My A license is in oval. Okay, um, that's all I got. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Put your likes down below so more people can see it. I'll put the links to our Discord down below um, where you can download the setups. Uh, they're free to share up there. Let's see here. All right, notes. Buster's Corner, free to share. Set up your share, bust your buddies. There's our Discord is also in the setup, and that's Tom's GitHub for um, overlays and his um, workbooks. Motec. <laughs> I can't remember the name. And there's the link to our Face Group uh, thing. I'll put all these same things down below in the um, notes so you can find us. Uh, our Discord. Uh, Join the Discord. I do a basic setup, uh, uh, baseline setup each week for each each track we go to. Um, and once I get my box set ready to go, I put it out there for the the other guys to um, try it, tweak it, thumbs up, thumbs down it, um, and maybe grow from there. But it gives you someplace good to start. Just a little better in stock. All right. Um, let me see here. What else we got? So join us on Discord, like and share the video. Um, that's about it guys. Okay. That's it. I'm out. Thanks guys. Happy race day.